Bernie Madoff, Enron, Tyco, financial villains of Wall Street, responsible for stealing millions, if not billions of dollars from investors. And now add the names Factor Corp and Farm Mutual Financial to that list. Our Mike Edgel tonight unravels a complicated scheme where hundreds of Canadian clients were scammed for more than $50 million, many losing their life savings. All of us decide how much risk we'll have in our lives. It might be a bet, a whim, a gamble. But the definition of the word itself implies the risk is known. The risk sold to you was what? No. There was no risk. You would always have your initial investment. Looks like they're getting ready to plant tomatoes on it. This is it. This is it. Yeah, the home farm is over there where those silos are. So where are we now? This is uh, part of the, uh, the home farm where I was born. In 2006, Bob and Judy Forsyth knew it was time to sell the family farm and retire. So how many years was this land in your family? It's been in the family for well over 100 years. They weren't about to gamble a hundred years of hard work, so they tried a new investment opportunity that was getting some real buzz around Dresden. The local farm insurance branch was selling some new debentures, a type of bond. So we called the young man that was selling the debentures and he came here to our house and... Um, nice guy? Nice guy, and we, we trusted him. When you give someone your trust, what does that mean? It used to be uh, you could do it with a handshake. Now you gotta go through 35, sheets of paper and all this to legal stuff. Our trust was with this fellow and he told us the way it was going and he, it sounded so good. It probably maybe was too good. Oh yes, it was too good. They indirectly bought debentures from a Mississauga company called Factor Corps, sold through a network of local farm mutual branches. In total, more than 400 families invested more than $50 million of their savings like 96-year-old war veteran Albert Van Beek, who signed a check for $130,000. If they had told you that it wasn't a safe investment, you never would have given them your money. No. The Weebers, $220,000. Sorry, you were investing in your children's education? Yeah. And you can't do that now? Not now, since the Factor Corps bankruptcy, we've stopped making that contribution. That's right, Factor Corp went bankrupt amidst allegations of mismanagement. So did Farm Mutual Financial set up to sell those debentures. How much money did you put in? $200,000. It was everything we had. $200,000? Yes. And what's left now? Nothing. We, we have nothing. We, if Bob wasn't getting the old age pension and Canada pension, we would have nothing to live on. How tight is it right now? Uh, very tight. It takes everything we got just to pay our bills and buy groceries. There's no extra to do anything. I went recently to get renew a prescription and it's quite an expensive one, but I knew it was going to take a lot of money out of our account that we needed for other things. So you might be wondering how is this any different than the money so many people lost on the markets? Well the investors here say it all comes down to the sales pitch, which sure sounded to them like a guarantee. Words like secured, with a return of 8% per year, with the comfort of no market or interest rate volatility. I outright asked Tony if, if we ever had to worry about our, our initial investment, and he said, no, you'll never have to worry about it, Judy, those were his words. What started as who to trust is now who to blame. Is it the now bankrupt Factor Corps and its leader, Mark Twardun, who investors can't find? Is it the also now bankrupt Farm Mutual Financial Services, a complex web of more than 40 different companies that sold the product? Or is it the small town dealer and salespeople who met with those families? A salesman named Tony Grubb sold to the Forsyths. So we dropped by to ask some questions. This is the company that sold it. Is Tony here? No, he stepped out for the afternoon. It's Mike Edgel from Global 16 by 9. So Tony still works here, I assume? Yes. Yeah. Is there someone we can talk to about the Factor Corp uh, situation? There's nobody here. If Tony. you want to do a story, you can do it off of our property. We also tried to speak with that salesman's former boss, branch manager Jamie Rainbird. Rainbird is now facing a disciplinary hearing for allegedly failing to screen many clients. The Factor Corp debentures were so high risk, 
investors were obligated to have at least a million dollars to play with. A judge found only one in 15 investors were legally qualified to buy them. Family's lawyer, Nigel Gilby. Unfortunately, what it turned out in reality is to be anything but. And at the end of the day, there's still a mystery as to where all this money went. Where is the money? That's what we don't know. We have heard that some of the money has gone into the islands in the Caribbean. And Bob, your theory? I think somebody's having a, lot, a good time on it. You put your trust into somebody and they let you down. Even if we win this case, we don't know what we're going to get back out of it. There's, there's no promises yet. If I only did this, if I only asked more questions, do you get those feelings? Uh, you know what? I don't. And I think it's because I so trusted them. And there's a lot of pain as a result of that. What's that like, Bob, hearing your wife talk like that? It, it's sad. It's, it's something that shouldn't have been. It, uh, we thought we had everything all figured out. Retirement, not quite. Bob is now forced to take some shifts at the local canning factory to make an extra $6,000 a year. You should be retired, though. It didn't work out that way. I, uh, I still have to come back to work every uh, fall and do the tomato run. Today, multiple lawsuits are underway, but the major players won't comment. The Forsyth family says it would at least like to have a simple apology. In towns like Dresden, many people choose slow growth. Even the local horse track doesn't pay out much more than $10,000. It is a life built on the trust of friends, where risk is seen as kind of foolish. Just who would take advantage of that? When you start thinking about all this, do you think of your dad? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think about it all the time because, you know, he and Grandpa worked hard to get this stuff. And uh, they put a lot of money and hours and, and sweat into it. And uh, now it, it's gone. Money is one thing, but this is personal for you. Do you feel in any way this is an insult to your dad's legacy? Yes, I, I really do.